A GT350R that's won an awful lot of races. When Ford rolled out the Mustang for 1965, Carroll Shelby's team immediately went to work on building a road racing version called the Shelby GT350. And the GT350 still stands as one of the pinnacle American performance cars ever built. The stripped down Mustang was treated to revised suspension geometry, a hotter 289 cube V8, a matched four speed and rear gear set, stiffer suspension, and a gutted interior to save weight. And while many of these cars were raced, Shelby's team built 34 specially prepared GT350s for SCCA B production class racing, and these were called the GT350R. All the Shelby GT350R competition coupes were bred to be race cars from day one, but this number 180 Brown Brothers car is perhaps the winningest GT350R of all of them. It's a very special car here in the Brothers collection. From 1957 to 1964, the Chevrolet Bowtie flew in the winner's circle in SCCA B production class championships, driven by the likes of Don Yanko and Dick Thompson. But all that changed in 1965. Shelby's goal was to win races, and when his GT350R competition coupes hit the track, it was on. When the dust settled, the GT350Rs had secured their place in the front of the pack and held on to that position for many years. And this particular car was sponsored by Brown Brothers Motors in Vancouver, British Columbia, and driven by Tommy Hamilton, who campaigned the car in several series in the Pacific Northwest and Canada. And Hamilton was a seasoned sports car racer, and behind the wheel of the GT350R, he proved to be a powerful force on the track. In fact, he won the International Conference B production and C modified championship titles in his first season racing the car in 1967. And he only got better for 68 when he powered the car to five different West Coast championships. All told, Hamilton won over 40 events in several different classes in the number 180 car. Tommy Hamilton was an extremely passionate racer, and he wasn't content to run this car in the sedan or B production classes alone. He would routinely change the intake and carb setup and other details to allow the car to legally race in different classes, and then successfully competed in those classes as well. As a result, the Brown Brothers number 180 car captured titles in several series and classes and countries during its racing career. The GT350R is a far cry from a stock Mustang, and it began with a gutted shell. Gone are the sound deadener, rear and side glass windows, upholstery, and other comfort items like the heater and the radio. The body was lightened with fiberglass panels up front, flares were added to the fenders to accommodate wider 15-inch wheels and race tires for better traction, and plexiglass side windows with aluminum frames. The front suspension was revised to change the mounting points of the control arms for better handling, and stiffer springs and Coney adjustable shocks were added to grab hold of the track. A larger sway bar and oversized Lincoln disc brakes were adapted as well. The rear suspension benefited from traction bars, higher rate springs, and matched shocks. Power came from the 271 horsepower K-Code 289 V8, but it was beefed up with a higher lift solid camshaft, aluminum intake and special four barrel carburetor, tri-Y exhaust headers, smaller pulleys, and a dual point distributor. Power exceeded 325 horsepower, and longevity was helped with improved cooling systems. Signature Cobra valve covers add valve train clearance, oil cooling, and a bit of style, and a support bar called the export brace kept the front shock towers from trying to meet each other. 
The four-speed manual Borg Warner T10M transmission feeds the nine-inch rear axle with a limited slip differential, and it's got Fairlane rear drum brakes mounted to it. The GT350R rolls on lightweight aluminum American racing wheels. Inside the car, a four-point roll cage stiffened up the chassis, and the driver sat in a race bucket. Racing gauges fill the dashboard, but that's really all you got, and it's only what you need. A 34-gallon fuel tank keeps the car on track, and the open exhaust screams at high RPM. Gone are the bumpers, and the body has been restored to its original Wimbledon white and blue striped appearance. This car has seen some changes over the years, but we think it's cool that it has been returned to its most winning era in terms of appearance and equipment. This is a perfect example of what you'd call a real deal car, one that is a documented winner with tremendous historical significance. There's a wide variety of cars here in the Brothers Collection, ranging from stock correct muscle cars that roam the streets to pedigreed full-on race cars that won on tracks. If you go to our website at musclecaroftheweek.com, you can go through and see the cars that we've featured from all varieties here in the Brothers Collection. Thanks for watching Muscle Car of the Week.